Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royals at the Ranch, episode 16. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary, and we are going to start a series of episodes about transitions, but specifically about transitioning ex-breeder snakes into a home situation and how to help them become part of your family. And Fulcrum is going to help us tell that story through his own journey and his experience moving from a situation where he was a breeding animal to a situation where he now lives in our home. This episode is going to be a lot of history about Fulcrum and a little bit of information about what you can expect if you take in an older snake or actually an older animal of any kind that has been raised previously in an environmentally deprived situation or in what some texts call an environmentally standard situation for breeding animals. And I will talk a little bit more about what that is, but that is basically the opposite of an enriched environment or a complex environment. So Fulcrum is a Python Regis, a Royal Python. Right now, as I make this video, he's five years and 10 months old. He's a caramel albino piebald or as the Australians say, caramel albino piebald, and he is a male. Fulcrum was hatched at Hudson River Reptiles in December of 2015, and he spent his whole life there as a breeder male until April of 2021, when he came here to live at Behavior Education and become one of our outreach animals, educational program animals, and a family member. So he was hatched and lived with the same person in the same facility and he never was exposed to any other situations until he came here to behavior education. This was his morph market ad, the one that I responded to. I was specifically looking for an adult royal python because all of my study animals were juveniles and babies and I was hoping for an adult royal that I could hold in videos and use as an educational program animal that was already used to people and habituated to handling and was comfortable and relaxed with that. That is not exactly what Fulcrum is, but it's not that he isn't that either. And I'll explain that more as we get into his story and his journey. So his prior living situation was in a breeder rack. And that consisted of a 30 inch long by 20 inch wide by nine inch high tub. And he had plain white paper as substrate and he had a water dish. So that was his whole living environment was this tub. And some of the scientific literature would term this as standard living conditions for a breeder animal. And some of the scientific literature calls this deprived conditions. Now understand that Fulcrum wasn't deprived of the essentials to live like food, water, heat, um, climate control, and health care. But why it's called environmentally deprived or deprived living conditions is because he did not have the ability 100% to express species typical behaviors. He did not have exposure to things he would have in nature, like sunlight and other elements of weather. He didn't have exposure to novelty or new items. So he didn't have any environmental complexity at all. And that's why the conditions are either called standard, and that is standard specifically for breeding snakes or environmentally deprived conditions. Now, one thing that I want to point out right now, if you are transitioning an ex-breeder animal into your family, is don't make any sudden changes. You have to understand that that is all that snake has ever known for its entire life. And for Fulcrum, that was about five and a half years. He didn't know any other living situation. And because he lived in those deprived conditions, his brain wasn't mentally stimulated. And so he wasn't learning how to deal with adversity. He wasn't learning how to deal with novelty. He wasn't learning how to problem solve. And he wasn't learning anything whatsoever about anything he would encounter living in a household with a family. 
and that would be any normal activity that would be in a home. So the people that live in the home, the other pets that live in the home, the furniture in the home, the lights and sounds and noises and all of the visual stimuli in the home, he is not going to know what any of that is. It's going to be 100% alien to him or to the snake that you might be trying to transition after they've been a breeding animal or they've lived in a breeder rack all of their lives. It's going to be scary. So you need to make sure that you transition them gradually. Now let's start down here at the bottom where it says initial. Initially, I recommend replicating their previous living situation as closely as possible when you first get the animal. So Fulcrum was living in a breeder tub on plain white paper with a water dish. And I replicated that somewhat. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, he was a bigger animal and I don't have racks here, so I couldn't replicate it hundred percent. But if I'm transitioning a baby, for example, I was able to get a Royal Python recently um, at only three weeks old. So it was very easy to put him in a tub identical to the one he was at at the breeders because it's shoebox size and then transition him from there to the living situation that he's going to have in our facility. So that is our next step is the intermediate step where you're gradually going to start transitioning the snake to the living situation that you plan to have them in. And you can do that in one of several ways. I'll talk about that more as this series continues. And then ultimately, once the snake is comfortable and relaxed in the intermediate habitat, whatever that situation looks like for you, and they're confidently starting to engage in training and enrichment activities, then I would go ahead and make the move to the habitat you plan to keep them in. But understand that this is gonna be an extremely gradual process when we are talking about an adult animal that has only ever known one lifestyle, and in this case, it was a breeder rack. This is not going to be a matter of days or weeks. This is gonna be a matter of months and years to get that animal fully transitioned. So Fulcrum's initial habitat here was a plastic tub with a sliding glass front door, and that's what you see pictured here. He had a water dish, he had aspen bedding, and that aspen bedding I did keep to one half of the enclosure. The other half um, just had paper on it because again, I was trying to replicate for the most part the living situation that he had at the breeder while still introducing some minor environmental changes to add some complexity. He did have a humid hide with damp sphagnum moss in it, and that was basically a tub with sphagnum moss in it and a hole in the top that he could go in and out of. He had one diagonal climbing branch, a cardboard roll that he could get inside, and a black plastic hide. And then he had a UVB light bar and a halogen lamp for heat and light. He did have a heat mat under the tub for nighttime heat if it was needed. So I wasn't able to replicate 100% the tub as described by the breeder that he'd been living in before, just because I don't keep those kinds of things here. This was the closest thing that I had, it was a big tub. It does have this window sliding door in the front. And then I just added some very simple environmental complexity to it. But he did have the option to be on one end of the tub that didn't have the Aspen if that frightened him or made him nervous. And he actually did sp spend quite a bit of time in his humid hide. And I think that is because it, it replicated more closely the situation he was used to at the breeder, which was a smaller, um, simple, opaque tub or tub with semi-solid walls. And he didn't seem to mind the sphagnum moss. He liked to lie in that.
Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that little insertion of royals in your homes. I always enjoy watching that. Now let's get back to some background information before we begin Fulcrum's full story. Please remember that changes are stressful and for some animals, they're even distressing. So any transition that you make should be good or tolerable stress for the snake and really not reach the level of toxic stress. If you're confused about what good, tolerable, and toxic stress are, I've done a previous video about that. Not only one, but two. I did a Royals, in, a Royals at the Ranch episode about it, and I did, I think, a Serpente Sunday episode about it. So please check those out. When an animal has only ever known one thing, any change is going to be scary and stressful. And the longer the animal's been in that prior situation, the harder it's going to be for them to transition the more stressful that transition is going to be and the longer that transition is going to take because they have more history in the previous situation. The new situation is completely alien to them and it's going to be very difficult for them to adjust. Now this holds true when the animal is going from deprived conditions to enriched conditions or from enriched conditions to deprived conditions. It doesn't matter the complexity of the conditions. If they are just 100% different than the conditions that the animal was used to, it is going to be stressful for them to make that change. The animal has no knowledge or understanding whatsoever of the conditions outside of where they were living before. All they know is what they've experienced in the past. So they have no context at all to understand the environment they're living in now, and it's going to be completely alien to them. Most are gonna be scared, nervous, and anxious, maybe even defensive, because they have no idea what's going on or what anything in their new world means or what might happen to them in that situation. You're going to have a select few that are gonna transition just very well and go to the new situation and really have a lot of resilience and not have any problems, but that's going to be rare. Think about a situation that you've been placed in that has been 100% new for you, or think about the first time you ever went on a sleepover when you were a kid. How many of you called your parents to come pick you up the night, the first night that you ever did that? How many of you just thought it was exciting and um, wanted to be away from home more? So just like us, Animals are all different. And as I said, there are going to be a few that just take to the new situation, great. But most of them, especially if they've had a lot of years in that prior situation and it's all they've ever known, are going to be very distressed by a drastically different living situation, no matter what that might be. So please take the time to gradually help the snake learn how to interact with and live in their new environment. And that includes everything in that environment, even you and the other people or pets in your household. This is something that you might encounter. So snakes who have developed learned helplessness. Um, this can happen, for example, when a snake is hatched at a facility and they're put in a shoebox breeder tub or um, a hatchling tub, they're called. At first, they will try to get out. They'll move around a lot in the container. Um, they may try to push out of the sides or the top, but after so long of doing that with no results, with nothing ever changing, they eventually give up and stop trying to escape. They stop trying to get out and they can enter a state of learned helplessness. And learned helplessness occurs when an animal perceives that nothing they do makes any difference. No behavior that they attempt matters at all and so they disengage from responding to stimuli and they don't do anything even when there are opportunities available they just don't even know how to take advantage of those opportunities so when a snake has come from deprived conditions without any environmental complexity mental stimulation choice and control or the ability to express species typical behaviors and when they have lived in those conditions a very long time maybe from the time they've hatched through adulthood. They've been there so long, they don't know any other way of life, and they've reached a state perhaps of learned helplessness, then you may have to actually teach them what choice is. 
So retired breeder animals from many species, not just snakes, are sometimes in this category. And they're a, a big challenge to habituate to life with a family and to get them used to any environmentally complex situation or to the fact that they actually have choices and that they have choice and control over their own behaviors. So this may also be puppies that have been raised in a kennel situation, solely in a kennel and not exposed to a household or been socially isolated from people like feral dogs. It may be um, horses that have only ever lived in a box stall and now you're trying to transition them to a pasture life. So it's not just with snakes, but it's any animal who's lived in a situation where their choices have been limited, where their movement and their lifestyle has been restricted, it's going to be difficult to transition them to living with a family and all of the chaos that goes along with a human household. So you actually have to teach them and how to live in the human world and help them with that transition. So here's an example. You may leave the door open and have to actually teach the snake that it can go through it or else that door could be open for days or weeks and the snake's going to remain in place with that out even trying to go through the door um, because even that simple act of opening the door they don't understand because they have no concept of being able to make that choice to leave the enclosure and that's just an example and remember that anything novel outside of what they knew before may frighten them at first and so you have to introduce novel objects novel situations very, very gradually. Well, that pretty much used up all of our time in this episode, doing all of that background information, not only about fulcrum, but about some of the things we're gonna talk about in the future. You needed to have some baseline knowledge before we move on with Fulcrum's story, because I'm going to take you through Fulcrum's journey from when he arrived here in April of 2021 through the present. So now we're in October of 2021. He's still in his intermediate habitat, but I have a new habitat ready for him to move into. So you're gonna get to see that. Um, he has eaten a meal since he's been here. He's had a veterinary check and he's pretty much ready to go into his um, habitat that I intend for him to live in for a while. So next week, we'll start by going over his journey and how we transitioned him step by step. If you haven't checked out the two previous videos that I released about Fulcrum, one was filmed in April of 2021 when he first arrived and it shows him going into quarantine and what his quarantine setup was like. And the second one shows us returning from his trip to the vet where he got his intake examination, his microchip implant and his viral testing done. So until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.